Hey everybody, welcome back to this old fright. We are out here at the shop. You'll notice the new pavement behind me. I'm very excited about that. Gas pumps are clean. Let me show you what we're looking at over here. So as you remember, a couple weeks ago, a month ago or so, I went out to my buddy's place in New Hampshire and brought home this blue, Aquarius Blue US 90. This is a, what is this? This is a 70, 1970. I, I had a 1971, I didn't have a 1970. And this one came with a new old stock tank. Doesn't have the sticker that goes here or the emblems. I may or may not be able to reuse these emblems because those fork dents in the tank are pretty severe. And especially on this side, it's got a dent right there. So I may or may not be able to use that. We'll see if I've got something else that I can use, but I have reproduction front and rear fenders for this from Mike Pomgren that we're gonna put on in addition to the tank, which will take care of 90% of the cosmetics. I've actually got a seat that would be better suited on this that is a reproduction complement of Mike Pomgren. And he gave me a paint code to use so I can paint the forks, the top triple, and that headlight uh, bucket to match the Aquarius blue color. So that's what we're going to do for cosmetics on this. And I don't think any of these tires are really holding there all that well. The front has some pretty bad splits. That rear has a pretty bad crack in the sidewall. The far tire on the other side might be something that can be saved, but we'll see. I haven't even tried to get this thing running. just want it to look a little bit better. So that's what we're going to work on. So we've had a productive night here out in the shop. We got the front forks off the US 90. I swapped out the rear tires. There's one over here. And there's one over in the corner that I've moved. These are two that came with the machine. They seem to be holding air nice. I cleaned this one up with 303 Aerospace, which is highly recommended by the man who knows the most about US 90s, Mike Pondren. This one I did not clean up, just so I could show you a little bit of the difference. I think it's more noticeable than maybe in the daylight, but definitely uh, in real life. So these are the fenders that I got from Mike Pondren. I pulled them out. This is a new old stock gas tank. You can see the color is spot on. Something I realized once I got it out was the, uh, the hardware, the brackets that mount this to the frame that fit over the grab bar grommets there and, and also latch on the front. Uh, they're not there. You can see them here. They're, they're riveted on. So I didn't want to disturb this set of fenders. I just wanted to keep them as is. I had a, a less nice set over here and I have taken the rivets out I'll have to clean those up probably spray them blue so they match along with the forks which reside over here and the, uh, the headlight shell and the top triple which you can see used to be blue this used to be green Gotta get that fixed up. Here is the front tire that will go on this machine once, once we are ready. There's the other rear tire. So that's the progress on the 90 for the evening. We're in good shape, leaving it at this point. We've been out here about three hours now, and uh, it's bedtime for me. And that's where we're gonna leave it. Over and out. So here we have the headlight bezel from the Aquarius Blue. US 90 that we got from 
New Hampshire. And you can see, obviously, it had been green at some point, parrot green. It is now black. We are going to apply some stripper to this and get that paint off so we can paint it Aquarius blue. I have a sandblaster, but it is not operational at this time. So we're gonna do it this way. Okay, we have some aircraft remover paint stripper here. It is very gelatinous. So I'm just gonna get a little on this chip brush. Hope it doesn't have a reaction with a chip brush and just start applying it. You should really be using gloves when you do this. No, we, have we do have gloves, I just not did not plan ahead. I will probably get some gloves before okay. I start to handle this. You getting me a glove, honey? Yeah. Thank you. Can you reach him? I've never used the paint on variety. I have used the spray on and it takes about three seconds for that stuff to start wrinkling off like it is. It looks like the outer layer is coming up currently. So this might need to be reapplied. Okay, this paint really isn't coming off like I had hoped. It's coming off a little bit. I'm gonna try a little bit more. I was thinking this would be a an easy alternative to sandblasting, but at eighteen dollars for this little jug, if it's going to take a lot, then it's not worth it. Especially when I have a sandblaster in the other room. It's kind of just being worked around and agitated. Maybe that's what we got to do. Wow. It's working on that black, but well, we got to wait and see if it works on the green. What's the green called? Parrot green. Parrot green. Wow. How many years did they make parrot green, honey? No idea. Like one. Nope. One or two. They made it for two years. Then did they stop doing green or did they change it? They changed it. They changed it. You know what the other green oh, was called? Uh, no, it's called um. Summer yellow was the other color they made at the same time as parrot green. Give up? It 
Tell me this, is it a lighter green? Is it a darker green? Think lighter? Are you looking at one in the other room? No, I'm looking at this first. Oh, that is. That's the that's the color. And there's one in the other room. Uh, I don't know what color. Can you tell me? It begins with an M. No. Nothing. No. Mighty. Ah, uh, you said it before. Yeah. Mighty Green. Now, how many years did they make Mighty Green? Two. Two. Was it after or before Parrot Green? Yes. Yeah. Literally. Yes. Well, I'm just checking. <laughs> Testing you. All right. So that that worked good for the black, but it's not really touching that that green. So we're gonna try just a little bit more. Not really touching that paint. Maybe because, like, uh, it's probably a better quality paint for sure. Yeah. I've used the spray on version of this on a gas tank for a big red. And boy, it, it attacked it very quickly. I thought this goopy version, this is extra strength too. They probably ruled out all the good stuff that made it work extra good though. It's not even touching it. One thing we learned is it's kind of safe to remove paint over top of your Honda factory paint, I suppose. Yeah. I think I got some of that spray stuff. Should we try that? Okay. Let's see how this stuff does. Here for that. Don't sniff it. Probably not good. Do you see the paint wrinkling up at all? No. They have the good paint. Yeah. They they had the good paint back in the day. I don't see it doing anything. 
I'll insert a picture of that big red tank that I tried this on and that that paint didn't stand a chance. That's enough. Huh. Well. Allow time, five to ten minutes, for a remover to work. Do not rush job. Test a small area to see if finish is ready for removal. Then scrape off loosened finish by gently working in the direction of wood grain. Is this thing made of wood? With a chemical resistant plastic scraper, wipe off sludge with rough cloth or medium steel wool. Repeat application if finish is particularly stubborn. Well, I think we are in the particularly stubborn category, but it hasn't been five to 10 minutes either. I don't think we should let this video keep going for five to 10 minutes though. So maybe we'll, we'll stop it and, okay. Okay, so I just got a little pick here and I got curious. After a couple minutes, the green paint did start to soften. So, I'm just kind of walking around, pulling it off with the edge of this pick. Some of the little rust spots here are, you can tell the surface is eaten up a little bit so I will sand this to give the surface a little tooth before just firing some primer on here but I'll use uh, some sandable primer and maybe try to build up those areas just a little bit So I wiped off the stripper and I've just been sanding it a little bit with some 220. That's gonna be tricky without sandblasting, but I'm gonna do my best. And getting around this edge is gonna be time intensive, but my shop is not set up like I need it to be. So we're just gonna do what we can with this and call it good and move forward with doing things better in the future. Quick update on my 90 project. You'll notice some Aquarius blue on a few different parts. I had cleaned up a headlight bucket here and primed it, but I opted not to use that. And again, forgive me for my shop. I am trying to do way more than I, I can in a certain amount of time. But I found this, this is all new old stock. Uh, I should probably do a I'll share the video of me opening these really cool parts. Found them on eBay, getting harder and harder to find. These are the forks. Got them sandblasted last week, primed and painted. I'm gonna have to spray some clear on them because this finish is not, there, that's maybe a little more focused. This finish is not on par with the other parts, so. We'll give that a couple coats of clear. Same thing for these. These are the brackets that go on the back of the, the fenders, the rear fenders to hold them to the frame. That's the triple. What I need to do, and this is what I'm gonna focus on right now, is see this? Oop, let me get out of the light. That's the steering stop, and that's not how they're supposed to look. They're supposed to be nice squared off, uh, squared off piece of steel that the the nubs on the steering, or on the, these right here, if I can get it to focus. On the lower triple, those hit that little 
piece of metal and it stops the forks from going right into your tank. And that would explain, the condition of those would explain why this has such massive fork dents in it. And if I threw a new old stock tank on this machine like I'm about to, and didn't fix that little piece, not that I'm gonna hammer this through mud holes, you know, but even though that was what they were designed to do, as we all know, um, if I never fix that piece of steel, the forks could definitely come into contact with that tank. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind that off, because there's no building that back up, in my opinion. I, I am a rookie amateur welder, so we're just gonna grind that off. I've got some steel over to the side that I'm, I've taken some measurements off a, a less marked up uh, steering stop. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, copy that, weld a new one on, sand that front end up, uh, spray some, some blue while we got it out, and clear that, and then start reassembly tonight. Okay, I've ground off that piece. I didn't go all the way back to uh, the frame just because leaving that square is going to allow me to weld this new piece on and have a flat surface to to weld to so that's what we're going to do right now like i said i am a very very early amateur at welding so whatever whatever we don't like we can grind up and make it look nice so here nothing a little grinder isn't going to fix You know what? That is fine by me. I mean, a lot of these welds Honda made were not the prettiest welds, so I don't want to make it look too good because then people will know it's not it's not original. So what we're gonna do? We'll sand. We'll sand what is blue. We'll have to get a new decal. As much as I'd like to keep that. We gotta, we gotta spray a little color on this. And uh, Mike Pomgren makes new ones of those. We'll scuff up the VIN. There it is. One zero, if you'll notice right here, one zero, that means this is a 1970. We'll talk more about that in a, in a US 90 video. That's where we're gonna have to leave it for now. We'll get some color sprayed on it soon and hopefully be assembling this tonight. Okay, we are prepped for our paint. This is uh, this is Shade Tree Mechanic work at its best right here. Garbage bag masking, very light sanding job, some haphazardly placed masking tape. But we're not doing high level restorations here. We're just dressing this up since we dressed up everything else. And here we go. We have primer. We have the first coat of paint. Clear is on. I shot a little blue on the underside of Mr. Palm Grand's fender. So I noticed it was fiberglass and not blue. At some point I'll catch that fender. Over here we are riveting on the bracket to hold the fenders on and my rivet gun broke. So I'm going to be getting a different one. A good buddy of mine said don't get the rivet gun from Walmart. But Walmart was close by so I got it. And I wish I'd listened to him. So don't get the rivet gun from Walmart. I got three rivets out of it before it broke. Forks are looking good. You'll see my 75, 1975, 70, sorry, 1975, 90 there. Waiting to get these wheels put on. Just got them mounted today. The other bracket and the other triple are here. So we've got some assembly to do tonight. For upstate New York, it is hot. I got my fan going. 
I need to get some AC out in the shop. Continuing to make headway, we've got the Mike Pomgren Vintage Motorsports seat mounted to the Mike Pomgren Vintage Motorsports fenders with a shipment from Mike Pomgren right here. We've got a, a rear brake cable that I need to install because this one is shot. Uh, and then we've got, look at this. That is one of Mike Pomgren's reproduction aluminum air pumps. Now I'm gonna do a, a video on US 90s and I'm gonna compare that to the original uh, air pump, show you how they work. I'm not gonna do it right now because I, I don't have my hands free. But I just wanted to tease that right now. That is straight from the man himself. And then I've got a, a goodie bag here. I've got a decal for this fender. That'll go there. I've got some tank decals. I've got the uh, altitude compensation carburetor decal. I've got screws for the new old stock badges I have for the new old stock tank. So... Before the end of the night, this thing is going to be looking like a three-wheeler again, and I'm excited about that. A new brake cable is installed. I've tipped this up on end so I can insert the forks, but these all have loose ball bearings that, that I have over here in a cup. Uh, the lower ball bearings I kept right here. We've got some very sticky red grease that I am going to place on the lower race for the bearings. There's a dust seal that goes down here that I need to put on first. And believe it or not, they still sell it. I bought a whole bunch of little odds and ends. There's that dust seal right there. Still get it brand new, probably used on a bunch of different things, but so we've got to slide that down, get it around the forks, stick the bearings on, get them so they're sitting in there nice. The upper bearings are still in there and I've tucked the race in and I taped around it so hopefully I can just slide things in from the bottom. I'll have the upper nut on hand ready to go and cinch that in and we're another step closer. Okay, so that dust seal is on. All the bearings are present and accounted for. Hey, if you're ever doing this and you don't have a continuous strand of bearings all the way around, you've, you've dropped one. They don't leave gaps. They're all shoulder to shoulder in there. So this is a really sticky grease that I'm using for this. So when I switch over and slide this in to the neck, hopefully everything stays where it needs to. And then uh, I can screw the cap in on top and be, be in good shape. Let's try it out. Okay, so forks are installed. Headlight, headlight and lens are new old stock. These are reproductions from Mike Pomgren. Uh, handlebars are looking good. I'll talk about how this works in my upcoming US 90 video. I haven't connected the wires yet, just because I'm working on a time crunch and I'm gonna have to go back through this anyway. So I'm getting things together to get it on its wheels again. I ordered new hardware to mount the fender. And that's what I'm about to do. It'll be fender. I've got to put the front tire on the axle and hub. And then install that. And then just do the, the tank emblems. And I think this one's going to be done for now. Okay. We are going to call it a night. And we are going to call it a wrap on this 90, this project for the time being. So, 
just to recap, we started with a, a machine that had three tires that didn't hold air. One kind of sorted did, but the other two, one not at all, one lost it pretty quick. Front forks were painted black, the front fender was black, the top triple was black, the headlight assemble, assembly was black, and it had terrible fork dents. We corrected the stop, the steering stop, so those don't hit. We swapped out fenders with some beautiful reproductions from Mr. Michael Palmgren, Vintage Motorsports, as well as a nice seat from Mike Palmgren, brake cable. Plenty of work left to do. This deserves to be completely gone through, but for time's sake, we did what we could, and I think we got a very respectable end product, but more to come.